Hello, my name is Mo. I've been a sex therapist for 20 years and I only work three days a week. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about how I did that and my business model and how you can too by embracing the philosophy that I have of being a multi-passionate business owner. I truly believe that we're not meant to work 40 hours a week doing one thing only. I kind of knew that at an early age, but I still went ahead and got my bachelor's degree. But after getting my bachelor's degree, I knew in my heart that what I really wanted to do was something creative. I got my bachelor's degree in psychology and um, I, you know, I have all these stories about like why I did that, but you know, I've been doing some real deep dive shadow work more recently. And I think what's really becoming obvious to me is I chose the path that I chose because I wanted to do humanitarian work and creative work simultaneously. And I wanted to also do it on my own terms. So I really decided right after getting my bachelor's degree that I was going to um, focus my time on music because I, I am a musician. I was classically trained in piano as a young age and I started writing poetry at the age of 15 and at 18, I discovered like this whole new world of like, oh, you can actually like be creative and it's a thing, like go out and perform and, and do things like that. But I wasn't ready, I wasn't prepared. And so that was the thing that I decided to focus on after graduating, after getting my bachelor's. But I never really set out to be like a full-time musician or a full-time artist or anything like that. I just knew that it was an aspect of myself. And the other aspect of myself was I wanted to be a business owner and I wanted that business to be creative, but also humanitarian, also politically inclined. And so I was able to combine all of my passions um, and do that. I, I did take the long route. I did get my master's eventually. So I took about a seven year break from getting my bachelor's degree in psychology till um, getting my master's degree in psychology. So I didn't go back to grad school till I was about 30. And in that time I was playing in music. I was just exploring different kinds of different careers. I worked in tech for about five years um, and also worked you know, as a, you know, worked in social services, making very little money. I waited tables. I did a bunch of different things all while I was also playing music and, um, you know, building that sort of side of myself, um, learning to write songs, getting better on guitar. I was kind of a self-taught guitar player. Um, but I always knew that I wanted to kind of do both. And, Somebody in my graduate program, two different people, told me that I should be a sex therapist. And I had lived a very sort of open, kinky lifestyle in San Francisco. And so that made perfect sense um, when I was in Los Angeles that that would be something that I would um, dive into. And I dove deep. But I, I will tell you, when I was going back to graduate school at that age of 30, I was playing in a rock band and we were playing all over LA and we were having a lot of fun and doing really great stuff. There was this gnawing feeling that I was selling out, that I wasn't giving my due, um, that I should really be pursuing the band full time. I even got pressure from people around me like, why are you giving up on music? And I never gave up on music. I wasn't giving up on music, not in the least. Um, I had a plan and I, and I needed to execute it and I was driven by a force, a strange desire. I can't even describe it, but I went to graduate school at that point. And let me tell you, it was so difficult because graduate school wasn't cheap. Number one, it was very expensive and I took out loans to be able to afford it. And then number two, I was like, I was married at the time. I was in a band. I was 
burning the candle at both ends. Like literally I would leave the house in the morning around like 8, 8.30. And then I wouldn't get home till after practice or after we had a show, sometimes 11 or 12 o'clock at night. And I was married. And so my partner was very upset with me all the time because I was never home. And um, I really started to second guess, like, did I choose the right career by going back to school? Like, did I sell myself short? And then at that point, I was like knee deep in loans. Like once you take out those loans, like I can't drop out of school. I'm still, you know, beholden to those loans. So now it's like I have to see this career through. Well, I feel very blessed and I feel very lucky. And I worked my ass off to get to this place where I am today, where I have been a sex therapist now for 20 years those first few years were really hard. The thing about the mental health field is a lot of the work is part-time and that, I think that was a part of the reason I chose it. Being able to do both, doing something that was meaningful to me and doing something that was creative. So I embarked on building my own business um, right after I got licensed and I did the fastest route ever to getting licensed. Like I did graduate school in two years and one semester. So like two and a half years. And then it took me another two years to get licensed, which is like really fast. So I did that whole process in four and a half years, got my license, opened my practice, opened my office, and just basically started letting people know I'm a sex therapist. I work with the queer community. I help people with coming out issues. And slowly but surely, it started to grow. But in the process, I had to market myself. And I had gotten divorced by then. And that's a whole nother story. My partner didn't support the idea of me working for myself nor being a musician. So stick with it. But I was determined to do what I set out to do. And that was, I'm going to start my own business. I'm going to make my own hours. I'm going to work part time so that I can also play music. So I started tweeting. <laughs> yeah, this is like the early days of Twitter, um, like 2008, 2009, 2008-ish. And I was living with my band at the time and there was nothing to do in between. And I didn't have a ton of clients. So I would just get online and I would tweet about erectile dysfunction and all this stuff. So... I started doing that and eventually I started building a name for myself online as a sex therapist. And um, meanwhile, I was also still recording with the band. We were recording with a Grammy winning uh, producer and I was doing all the things that I set out to do. Um, within a year or so, kind of like someone found me and asked me if I wanted to do a podcast. Um, and so I was like, yeah. And at that point, the band that I had been playing in kind of broke up. So I was like, yeah, a podcast, that would be a good creative thing for me to dive into now that I'm not playing music right now. Um, that podcast cost me a lot of money. I can't remember the fee, but for someone, a fledgling business owner like myself at the time, it was like three grand. Um, but it was super professional. It was like three grand for maybe like 12 episodes. I can't remember exactly, but it was the hardest thing I ever did because it was so professional and so clean and I had to interview people and I just didn't know what I was doing. So that ended, but I had this like arsenal of 12 really well designed podcast episodes. And so I found a free podcast platform called blog talk radio at the time. And I started doing more podcasts on my own just by myself with the guests. Um, and it was free. And I started doing that and I would have my friends on it. I would have different people who would talk about art therapy. Like I had different therapy friends, all sorts of other friends on it that could help. Um, and two of my friends um, that identified as lesbian, they came on it and we talked about lesbian sex. And I remember looking at the statistics and those, the, those episodes that those two gals were on did the best. They got the most ratings. Um, so one of those gals and myself decided to start a YouTube channel. And it was so cathartic. One, I really enjoyed doing it. Two, I got to be myself. Three, it was how my business grew. I grew my business because of this YouTube channel. That was started in 2012. 
and everything grew from there. Um, I got my first book deal. I um, got tons of media placements. Um, it just kind of blew up. I was still burning the candle at both ends though, because believe it or not, like you just get used to this idea that you have to say yes to everything. So burnout, and I'll link to my burnout episode, happened and I took some time off, moved to New York City, came back. Um, and in the, the whole time I never stopped playing music. And my partner at the time, who's still my partner today, was like, yeah, just write your books. That's all you gotta do, don't work, don't work. Like to hear someone tell you that you don't have to work, that you should just write your books and focus on music, like that was what I needed to hear. And it changed everything. Um, now, mind you, he didn't support me. I just had saved up a lot of money that I was able to support myself for about a year um, living in New York City. And um, a year in, I started doing some freelance writing work and that paid really well. So I kind of lucked out. Um, a weird side note is I, I was standing in, in Manhattan one day on the street corner and I had this vision. I was like, I'm gonna have money in like six months, I'm gonna have a lot of money. And sure enough, I landed this like sweet freelance writing gig that paid me a lot of money. Um, and then I realized, you know, like I'm making this good money, but I was, and I was still seeing clients, like I had a few smattering of clients, um, like that I was seeing like on Skype back then, cause it was 2014, 2015. And we, um, I, I realized like, this is what I want to do. I, I still want to do this work. I still love it. But now I had all sorts of information on how to do it right. Plus I had a book deal now, so I was doing a lot of writing. So I was able to sort of transition into doing this work part-time and really understanding how to do that and maximize how much money I can make. Um, and so that's what I teach you in my program. Today, um, I've been in practice in my, I've had my business since 2007 and I work three days a week. I currently work Mondays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays, 12 to 4 p.m. So I work about 12 hours a week on my business. Um, the other part of the time, the other times I am go working out, going on walks, writing. Um, I'm working on my fifth book now. I'm writing my book, another book. Uh, I am working on more episodes of my film, Temples and Brothels. Um, and I'm playing music with my band and taking care of my cat and, um, you know, doing a lot of things. I'm also taking care of my parents. They're aging, so I, I'm a long distance caregiver as well. So the point of this is where there is a will, there is a way. And you can learn, too, how to be a creative business owner if that's something that you really want. And in my program, Pleasure Psychology sexology training and certification, I teach you, I walk you through all of the things that you can do to become a very highly niched sex coach that has clients, that makes your own schedule, that has time to do the other things in your life that are important. I sought out on this journey with a purpose and I stuck to it and I'm very grateful that I get to do that today. So many people told me not to. So many people told me that I was selling out, that I was selling out on my music and not, not, not doing it. And that was BS because a lot of those people are still not playing music. A lot of those people are struggling financially. A lot of those people are working nine to five jobs that they don't like and that are not their passion. You can make those choices today and set yourself up for financial success doing something you love. But it does take time and it takes focus and you've gotta know what it is that you wanna do and you've gotta do it. I have other people that work with me that also only work three days a week and they get to do all the things they love. They get to spend time with the friends they wanna spend time with. They get to travel, they get to do the things that they love. So. Um, I just wanted to tell you a little bit about my background. 
Um, right now, my course is on sale this summer for $4.97. That's $497. That's $2,000 off what I normally sell it for because I want you to have this opportunity and I want it to be accessible to you. And this is what I can give you. Um, I can't give it to you for free um, because I do have to pay some folks um, that help me with the program, um, that teach um, the coaching calls, um, that do some of the administrative work with me. Um, so I do have to pay some staff, um, but because I'm in the position I am, I can offer it to you at this super low rate. And I really, really encourage you to take it because when you're in there, I'm certainly going to help you develop your own niche, do something that you're so passionate about and just get to live the life that you want to live. It's really, 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 it's something that they won't teach you or tell you. Prepare for your future. It's so important. It's so important. Um, and, and it can happen pretty fast, but you got to be diligent. You got to be diligent. You got to know what you want. And that's what I'm going to help you decide and figure out. So if that sounds um, like something you'd like to do, the link is below um, how to register. The code is SUMMER2000. SUMMER, because it's a summer sale. 2000 because it's $2,000 off. SUMMER2000. Use that code and you can enroll in Tier 2 for $497 this summer only. It ends at the end of summer. Um, it ends very soon. <laughs> I don't know the date exactly, but um, anyway, uh, thanks for listening. Thanks for sticking through this video and I look forward to um, seeing you in the course.